Welcome back to Filmmaker Focus in New York City. And today it is Friday the 13th. So welcome. All right. Today, again, my name is Kara Peterson, and I am with um, filmmaker Sebastian Corbacio. And he has just recently moved to New York from San Francisco. And what made you move to New York? Uh, probably that there's more of what a filmmaker needs here than there is currently in the Bay Area. Bay Area is very good for post-production, very good for special effects, uh, quite a few movies, very good for documentaries as well. Um, and I'm none of those. I make uh, films about real, quote unquote, realistic films about real people and there's no monsters or elves or goblins, unfortunately. Uh, not yet, anyway. So. Not yet. If it's realistic, you never know. How do you, as, as far as actually being in New York compared to San Francisco area, though, have you, how have you found it? What's been your biggest challenge of readjusting? The amount of people. Uh, the, I, the big moment when I was standing downtown on 42nd Street and 5th Avenue, and I realized downtown San Francisco was as far as my eye could see in either direction, but downtown New York was many more miles. Um, it's very compact. Uh, also, the weather's very different. I often tell people in New Yorkers, they ask me what the, what, the, what the weather's like, what the weather is like in San Francisco, and I say it's like, it's like one big, big air-conditioned hotel compared to here. So. I've been once a few years ago. It's been quite a long ago, but... So, as far as your filmmaking, you started filmmaking, or you first started getting interested in filmmaking when you're going to San Francisco University. San Francisco State, San Francisco State University. Um, I had already gotten an AA degree, and I was uh, getting a creative writing degree. And uh, at the time, this was the late '80s. Uh, the uh, there was uh, San Francisco State University was the only university that offered a creative writing degree at a bachelor level but I'd made a lot of friends in the dorms and we partied a lot and sometimes we made a movie or two and uh, so that got me hooked on filmmaking because it was a lot like short story writing in a way that's what I mean. now you have your prior films that you've already made you've had quite a bit of success in the film festival market were you a screenwriter? Were you the director? I was everything. Um, on this last one, I pretty much had to... Um, I was everything. I, I shot it. I'd, I'd done a lot of documentary work. Um, I was privileged enough to have a cast that was just phenomenal. So what I did was, and the, the title of the film is The Devil and Alexa Jones, and what I did was that uh, we rehearsed quite a bit. They did quite a bit of background work, etc. cetera. Um, it's actually a film about revenge, but uh, what I would do is turn on the camera and go, one, two, three, go, and wouldn't let them even think about what they were doing, and they re and which gave them a certain amount of freedom to screw up, gave me a lot of, me, me a lot of freedom to screw up, and uh, that's basically how I approached it. Whereas before, I'd always tried to be really, really structured with all my movies and stuff like that and storyboarded them to the max. And when you get on set, finally, you just throw 80% of that crap out and just go with whatever's happening, like this diesel right here. So, you know. So even as a writer, you're fine with the actors improv Not really. Um, I'm not a big, huge fan of improvisation. Um, Every line in The Devil and Alexa Jones and every other movie was all scripted. Um, and uh, no, I'm not a big fan of improv. I've seen some good improvisational movies. John Cassavetes comes to mind, and I've seen a lot of bad ones. Um, no, and I'm not. But in terms of uh, their physical actions, how they utilize the lines, um, that uh, that's what I always like to see an actor bring in. And there were a couple of, they do a couple of adjustments, but it's always in rehearsal, it's never on set. And what, who is the main character in this film? Her name is Alexa Jones, and she is a 17-year-old girl looking for a way to make her mark as an evil person. She does get the opportunity to, and the justification in her mind, to kill someone, 
which is her best friend Angela's Uncle Dave, uh, who has been molesting her since she was 12. Alexa found out. She is now justified to kill someone who really deserves it. And this comes from her parents having a lot of blood on their hands. Uh, they're extremely successful, very well off, but they got there in some pretty outrageously shady ways. And we're not talking bootlegging here. We're talking like, you know, they're not the Kennedys, but pretty close. And has this, this film has already been finished and is, is it out in the festivals or? No, I actually just sound mixed a little more this morning because uh, uh, when I, uh, some technical stuff, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, when I put it on YouTube, the, the, her voice dropped at the, like the pivotal moment and I had to go back and, and it's, it's every, it's every filmmaker's journey. So, so how long has the whole process taken you? Uh, it took me, it took us about eight months from rehearsal to about now. Eight to ten months, uh, somewhere along those lines. It was very, very easy to cast. Um, some of the uh, cattle calls I've had, they were cattle calls. Uh, one, we tried 27 people out, but this time we tried five people for, I believe, four slots. Everybody else came recommended. Everybody else were, uh... The smaller the, the day player roles were um, prominent figures in the San Francisco theater scene that I'd known for years, and I asked them to come in and what have you. Now you have another film also that you're in the process of starting, or you've written? Yeah, I like, I'm going to work on another piece. It's called Joyful Noel, or comma, a cheerleader noir. And it's supposed to take place in California, but we're going to probably have to film it in New Jersey um, or there, thereabouts or, or Pennsylvania or so forth and so on. Um, and it is about a cheerleader in high school who has to find out if she dropped her best friend during practice on purpose or not. And it's an old noir staple of, you know, who is the killer? Oh, the killer is me. And then it has this twist at the third act, it's actually a, a, that really that that will really blow your mind. Um, it blew my mind, so I'm hope it's going to blow yours. So. so is this based on jealousy? Is there a, a theme behind, a, or a message in the film, or why she would have maybe dropped the cheerleader or not have dropped the cheerleader? I, I was really. This is actually based on a story that uh, one of my acting students told me. And I thought it was really, really fascinating. And I just, I don't remember the exact story at all. I just remember somebody was dropped. They were very close. She broke her hip or something like that. And it was all, it was all really terrifying and in a high pressure cooker kind of environment. And it talks about the larger themes of, of society and the kind of pressure that we put our children on and we don't let them breathe and we don't let them become human beings on their own. Now, some of your influences of the films that got you involved in filmmaking are Clockwork Orange, right. Sex Lives and Videotapes. Right. It seems like some of those, as you said, it sounds like some of those same themes in the reality of life and the, the smaller roles and the smaller characters have stayed true to your filmmaking. Well, yeah, I am profoundly influenced by um, my, what do you call it, mentors or themes and so forth and so on. and. Uh, Woody Allen said, I guess, and he, I guess he was quoting Spielberg. He said, "We all, we were all remaking the the movies we loved as children, and uh, those were the movies I loved as a child and well, young adult, and uh, you know. And I, but I, what I like to do often is uh, use as many cliches as humanly possible and sort of turn them on their head. If you watch The Devil and Alexa Jones from start to finish." It's, uh, there's little motifs that have been used in just about every movie ever made. The detective movie, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give you one example. It opens up with the two girls running from something, and it's the highway with the stripes going under them. I mean, how many times have you seen that? But to me, it's still very exciting. Is there any particular one way or one thought you want people to think of when they think of you as a f filmmaker? Yeah, I want them to, uh, when they come to see a Sebastian Corbacio directed or scripted movie, it's going to be something very compelling. 
and I think that it's you got to bring something. It's not going to come to you. You have to go to it. Hopefully, uh, I'm. I try to have a lot of subtext, um, and be really thought provoking. You know, be one of those movies where you get out of the theater and you wa- have to walk around a little bit and think about it, just like all the other movies that I that I listed there. Is there a place that we can stay updated on your work? Yeah, my YouTube channel. You just go to my YouTube.com, Corbasio, C-O-R-B as in boy, A-S-C-I-O. And it's everything's on there, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Is there any other little projects or anything else that we should know about that's coming up? Yeah, I'm trying to uh, pitch a... Uh, this is basically my magnum opus. It's a film series. It's a... Uh, uh, mini series or maxi series. It's 11 episodes long. Um, that's only written. We haven't filmed it. It's called The Spartans, and it's about rock and roll, which is probably my second most biggest thing in my life. You know, next to breathing. So anyway. rock and roll. Yeah, pretty much. I worked on it for five years. It's about uh, basically once again a young girl finding her voice. You know, Alexa Jones is finding her voice through homicide. Dominique Zavas is finding her voice through a guitar, <laughs> which is a little more, I think, uh, uh, nicer, I guess is the word. Now, do you, if you're rock and roll, do you play? Have you been in a band? Yeah, I've been in, uh, I play, I don't consider my, I play guitar. Um, I'm not very good. I think that unless you, my dad always says, unless you devote forty hours, you can't to one thing. You can't call yourself anything. So I do it to relax. And I roadied bands, and you know, ever since I was like fifteen, and back in the eighties when it was kind of okay to have underage kids hauling your crap around for you and backing up the van and stuff like that. Real illegal now, but. Back then. I'm sure there are many stories that we could hear from your previous days, but it sounds like you're going to stick with filmmaking for now, and I'm sure that New York will uh, have its own stories to tell in the near future, so I want to thank you. It already has. I mean, I've been here for four months, and uh, I'm completely changed. So. Well, thank you for taking the time to come today. Um, and again, what's your? you said your YouTube site? YouTube, YouTube backslash Corbacio. C-O-R-B-A-S-C-I-O. So thank you again for joining Filmmakers Focus in New York City. And again, my name is Kara Peterson, and you can follow me on incarasworld.com. Thank you. Bye.